Uh, hello everyone. So I finished up my freshman year of college as a CS major, of course. And now that things have settled down quite a bit, I thought I'd take some time to talk about um, applying to internships as a first year student um, and how I was able to get three of them in my freshman year. And if you're wondering what the companies I got were, uh, the first one was NASA Ames Research Center. The second one was Northrop Grumman, which is the company I'm currently working at right now. And later this fall, I'll be working at Amazon, which was the third internship I was able to get. So I'm pretty active on the CS majors subreddit. And um, these past few weeks, I've seen a lot of incoming freshmen making posts about, um, is it possible to get a freshman uh, internship? Or what problems should I do to prepare for internships, uh, interviews, or like what projects should I make? And hopefully, um, in this video, I'll be giving like um, these incoming freshmen who want a head start in their career advice on how to get an internship in their freshman summer. And hopefully there are some valuable takeaways for um, other people as well who watch this video. And just before we start, um, I want to talk about my background a little bit. I don't go to like um, MIT, Stanford, not even one of those uh, top 20 colleges or universities that these companies and recruiters are obsessing over. Um, I go to uh, Northeastern University in Boston, if you heard of it, where a rising, I guess, uh, CS school. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think like the name brand of Northeastern has given me a significant advantage in this application process. All right, so the three most important things of getting or securing a freshman internship, in my opinion, would be First, a good resume, uh, lead code practice, and referrals, which is optional. And that's also listed in the order of importance. I will put these items in. And I guess first I'll explain like why a good resume is so important. Um, then I'll talk about how to craft a good resume, as well as some tips on passing the resume scanning stage. And um, so in my own experience for this summer 2022 season that we're currently going through right now, I started applying to these internships back all the way in August or September of 2021. And um, so during that time, it was pretty early for applications. And I thought that by applying early, I would get um, a head start or a better chance of getting interviews or an offer because of that. So in my first week, I sent around 100 applications, which is a decent amount in my opinion. And looking back now, um, it seems that I haven't gotten a single response from any of them. And I think the main reason uh, because of this uh, was because the, my resume just wasn't strong enough. And basically, I just wasted time applying to all these companies with a crappy resume. And after um, fixing my resume and looking back now, I did get a lot a higher response rate. And I think uh, the current internships I have right now were with my fixed resume. And I think it's important to understand that these companies that everyone's applying to, there's a lot of people applying. Like, I know like Google, Amazon, Meta, all these, uh, especially big tech ones with big names, they receive like thousands of applicants easily. And because of this, of, of all the overwhelming amount of applicants, um, it's impossible to go through like resume, resumes or applicant profiles one by one. And um, essentially what they use is a ATS or applicant tracking system program where um, applicants have like the resume scanned in and um, based on how well the program decides your resume is or your background is, then a recruiter will take a look at your profile and then hopefully get you to the interview stage of the process. So before, um, so I guess because of this, before you even like start practicing lead code, um, grinding textbooks, like cracking the coding interview or grokking the coding interview or uh, begging for referrals on LinkedIn, I think the most important step is um, getting past this resume stage or else everything else is basically useless. And um, especially if you don't have a big uh, school name, um, like a T20 school or better, um, it's a little, it's especially hard for freshmen uh, to get internships or passing the resume scan. And I guess my advice on how to pass this resume scanning stage is to first, um, don't use like 
a special resume format trying to impress recruiters like i seen people with fancy templates having like their experiences in the top left corner then the school name in the bottom right with their name all big in the center um none of that is really needed uh i think the normal resume template i'll i'll attach with my own in the description below i think it works pretty well in terms of uh, being able to get parsed by these programs. And these parsers basically, they first look for your school name, I guess, um, what school you go to, uh, what year you graduate, possibly GPA. Then they look for work experience. So what previous companies you worked at. Um, and then finally some projects or technologies or languages that you're familiar with. And in the process of parsing, I believe these uh, programs are uh, searching for keywords essentially. So other than like your school name keywords, they want to know what languages you're proficient at. Um, they want to know what frameworks you know, um, maybe since those are like relevant to the job and you'll need them uh, to pass this resume scanning stage. So my advice is to like uh, definitely list down any keywords you know, any programming languages you're familiar with or um, it doesn't have to be proficient in, as long as you're familiar with it, have done some projects or written a decent amount of code in it, I think it's fine to put it down uh, since at an internship, no company's expecting like an internship, uh, an intern to come in with like years of experience in a specific uh, language or domain. And finally, um, there was this one Google YouTube video on uh, that talked about crafting like a good resume. And I think the main takeaway from that video was using a syntax, uh, which is called accomplished X as measured by Y um, by doing Z. And I think this was like a highly helpful piece of advice um, since uh, by doing so, it would help with the parser um, being able to scan your resume well. And I found that it's also nice to include maybe some like uh, statistics or percentages or just quantitative numbers inside your resume since some of these resume scanners also look for that as well. And I guess um, another important uh, key advice of improving a resume would be to uh, changing your graduation date. And um, I think it's important to realize that the only reason why these companies like have these internship programs is to convert um, interns to full-time employees. Since um, by doing so, they don't have to retrain an employee from scratch. The intern already knows like the basics of the company, how to go through like the code base probably, or just how uh, things work in a general sense. And because um, interns are basically a full-time pipeline, um, companies are usually looking for interns that will be graduating soon so they can quickly convert them into full-time employees. And I think this is like one of the major reasons why it's so hard for freshmen um, or first year students to get internships because companies generally want like senior year students or junior year students since after like one more year of school, they can go immediately to the company. And so in my own situation, um, during high school, I took a ton of APs. I also did community college courses as well. So by the time I entered Northeastern University, I had around 50 credits out of the 133 needed to graduate which is a pretty big amount. And because of this, um, I was able to push my graduation year forward by one or two years. And as a result, um, after changing this and also adjusting my course schedule to take courses over the summer to possibly graduate earlier, um, I was able to finalize my graduation date to May 2024, 2024, or possibly even the summer 2023. Um, and as a reminder, I did start school in August 2021, so I'm technically supposed to graduate in May 2025. But as you can see, I was able to push my graduation date forward by quite a bit because of my incoming uh, credit as well as taking courses over the summer. And after changing my graduation date from 2025 to 2023 or 2024, I noticed that I received a lot of responses back um, compared to my old 2025 date, which just illustrates like the previous um, topic I was talking about of how companies generally want uh, students that are graduating sooner than later. 
All right, so let's assume you passed the resume scanning stage and now you're moving on to the actual interview process. So um, during the technical interview, um, you can expect to do like one or two of these at least uh, in your process. Um, you and the interviewer will be on a site such as carpad.io and he'll, he or she will be pasting like a data structure and algorithm related question and you'll be expected to write a solution and possibly run it as well. And in my opinion, the best way to prepare for these problems is by doing LeetCode. And if you're not familiar with LeetCode, it's a website containing thousands of these algorithm questions that you're free to practice with. And um, as for a guide on how to approach LeetCode, um, generally, I think it's good not to randomly do problems, uh, which was what I was doing in the beginning. I think it's better to uh, master a specific algorithm one at a time, um, do a ton of problems related to these, uh, to the algorithm you just learned, and then move on to a whole new different algorithm. So for example, um, if you're learning about sliding windows, first learn all the details about that algorithm, where it could be used, what problems it can solve, any edge cases you have to worry about. And after learning about it, then you can put this um, knowledge into practice by doing uh, all sliding window related problems. And by doing this way, I think it's easier to retain the information about um, what you learned uh, and so you can use it in the future. And I know it's not needed, but I know a lot of people like to use um, uh, textbooks such as Cracking the Coding Interview or Grokking the Coding Interview as well. And these textbooks, um, I think they're pretty good as well since they go through chapter by chapter um, of algorithms and in each chapter they talk about an algorithm um, discuss um, all the details about it and then give you a ton of practice problems related to the algorithm. So if you need like a guide on how to do these algorithm questions, definitely consider using a textbook. And from what I heard, I heard that grokking is better compared to uh, CTCI. So definitely use grokking uh, if you're interested. And another question that is asked pretty often is um, if I should get LeetCode Premium. Um, I guess it's not really needed at all. Um, most people get fine. Most people are fine without it. But if you're looking to do like specific problems of a company, um, you should consider getting a uh, LeetCode Premium since uh, these uh, LeetCode problems are tagged with company names that are only accessible if you have the premium version. And I guess um, just in general, I don't think you should be afraid of buying prep material that you think you need since anything you buy is a tiny investment compared to what you'll be making in the future. Um, for example, like um, legal premium, maybe it's like $30 or $50. Um, that's really nothing compared to like a uh, 100K or 200K salary that you'll be making in the future. And as for um, my own way of doing Leetcode, um, I mainly follow uh, problem lists. And the problem lists that I use are the Neecode uh, problem list and the Grind75. And um, these problem lists, um, they're basically uh, the best picked problems from Leecode sorted by um, the type of algorithm or uh, data structure. So if you're interested, I definitely suggest uh, checking these out. All right, so let's talk about referrals. Um, to start with, are they needed? Um, definitely not. In fact, uh, for the three internships that I was able to get, um, I wasn't referred for any one of them. And if you're wondering how a referral works, um, generally, um, the person who refers you, they'll send your uh, application or resume to either a hiring manager or recruiter. And by doing so, they can fast track you in your interview process. Um, but from my own experience, um, referrals can either be a hit or miss. Um, especially for big companies, since a ton of people are already being referred already, um, a single referral doesn't do too much in terms of help. And But for smaller companies, um, a referral can let you skip some stages of the initial interview process, uh, such as like the resume screening or possibly the online assessment. And in general, um, if you are referred, um, I guess you can assume that uh, your application or resume will be viewed by a recruiter and you won't be automatically screened out by a program. And I had a lot of people ask me like how to get these referrals. Um, so I think it's important to note that in general, you don't really need to know the person too well to refer them. So this means that 
uh, you can just ask people online, random strangers. And from my own experience, I did do that and they were happy to refer me. So there wasn't any issues uh, with doing that. And as for places to find referrals, um, usually I use LinkedIn or Team Blind. And when you uh, ask someone for when you ask someone for a referral, uh, make sure you include a brief message saying why you're a good fit for the role, um, what previous experience or knowledge or skills you have, and as well as a file of your resume. So in general, um, referrals not needed, but um, if you're finding that you're having trouble getting to the interview stage, uh, definitely consider uh, just messaging people online, seeing if they can help out with a referral. Yeah, so that's mostly it in terms of the important parts of getting a freshman internship, um, having a good resume, um, practicing Lee code, and possibly getting referrals. Um, some miscellaneous stuff that I guess could be important is um, keeping your LinkedIn profile updated because sometimes recruiters will DM you on LinkedIn about positions if they think your profile uh, is good. And also, um, if you have a GitHub account, I recommend uh, putting some projects on there and also working on some stuff so it shows that you have uh, an interest or passion in coding, which could also be helpful uh, for recruiters to look at as well. As well. Um, in the future, I'll be releasing a few more videos uh, about applications. Um, I'm planning to make one on like the various resources that uh, students can use to uh, improve their chances of gaining an internship offer, as well as another video looking at the in-depth stages of uh, the interview process. So um, look forward to that. And um, if you have any questions, you can uh, always DM me on LinkedIn. I'll put my uh, profile link in the description below and feel free to connect with me and I'll definitely accept. And uh, thank you for listening.